And uh, our board member, Anatole Koletsky. Yes. He makes a contribution that I have to underscore. He does, yes. He talks about the problems of the European currency and concludes in the end, Europe will need an evaluation <laughs> to try and cope with all of its various problems on the periphery. Uh, Europe as a whole, the euro would need to devalue against the dollar and the Asian currencies? We will have to have the European currency be a weak currency on a global basis I see. to help to deal with the problems of Greece and Spain and Italy and Portugal. I find that interesting. I'd like to explore that for a moment. Because many people see the holdings of the dollar as being a bit of an overhang yes. relative to the distribution of world commerce and so forth. Yeah. The dollar as a store of value plays a disproportionately large role. Yes. The euro would be the how they say candidate. Currency. Yes. So at some level, the store value motive yeah. is the intention yeah. with the needs of the real economy there, not just in the Midwest and the Rust Belt. Right. And, uh, now he thinks he thinks that Europe has constraints, and these are very apparent now with the talk about whether Greece will have to restructure its debt, mm -hmm. whether we have to have debt restructurings as well in Ireland and Portugal. But he sees these problems as being the dominant force, mm -hmm. and therefore he is bearish on the European currency. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, how, how about Germany? Is there a sense uh, that emerges that Germany's motoring along? Or, well, uh, Germany had a great recovery going back 18 months ago, led by export growth. Retail sales are growing, but they're still relatively sluggish. But mm -hmm. there's no doubt that Germany's been a great play on the emerging market theme because Germany's got very strong exports to the emerging market countries. Mm -hmm. Germany's a very strong niche producer of capital goods. It also produces upmarket automobiles. And the sales of those upmarket automobiles to China over the last three years have actually doubled. Wow. BMW and Daimler. Meanwhile, Volkswagen, because they've been in China now for 20 years, has the largest market share of all the foreign companies. But those are cars produced in China. What you've had is a huge surge in exports by Daimler and BMW over the last 18 months on the back of this very strong Chinese growth and the rise now in China of a new luxury consuming class that wasn't in China 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it's now commonly argued that China will be, will be consuming more luxury goods than Japan by 2015. Mm. Wow. Germany's a winner from all this.